Hey guys, the name is Chris Barocci. Welcome to Gear Corner. Some of you know this already. I'm a huge Telecaster fan, but I'm a big Les Paul fan too. These two are my main guitars, and sometimes it's really hard to decide which one to go with. What if someone mixed them together, but in an original and unique way? Hmm, it sounds promising. <laughs> This is the PJD Guitars Carry Elite. It's a stunning looking thing. I love the fact that it's a single cut body with a sort of a T-type headstock with an own twist. I love how it looks. Check out the description box under the video for additional infos, gear links, timestamps and uh, signal chain and everything. Also, if you enjoy my videos, please hit subscribe. Would appreciate it a lot. <coughs> Alright, check this out. This is really interesting. What comes from a T-type guitar? Well, a lot on the back side actually. Swamp Ash, that's a bolt-on neck, um, in this case with a, a very comfy recessed uh, joint. Then a maple neck, this is a roasted maple neck, and the vintage style uh, six in a row tuners. These are go tools, by the way. And uh, one more thing from Natalie. Of course, the string through body uh, bridge construction and the scale length, which is 25.5 inch. And then on the front, you'll find quite a few LP single cutty kind of um, details. Beautiful quilt maple top, the uh, three-way toggle with the two humbuckers, then the rosewood board, and even the radius is a mixture of these two guitar types or two vibes. It goes from 10 to 12, so it's a compound radius. It starts a little rounder here, which is going to be a 10 inch um, radius, and then it gets flatter up until the top where it's a 12 inch. <laughs> Two more things you would find on a T-type guitar, and that's the uh, the F hole, which would appear on a thin line guitar. And uh, the other thing is that the top is flat. It's not arched, it's not curved, there are no cutaways, no armrest, no nothing, which again reminds us of the simplicity of a T-type, which is great. And I love that fact because I'm so accustomed to that vibe, that flat body surface vibe. And on the other side, there's one more thing that reminds me of the G brand, <laughs> but just a little bit. It's more of a, a tribute, um, which is this 
little bit junior y kind of uh, pig guard, which I'm in love with. Why did I say that this guitar is a sort of a mixture of those well-known designs but in a unique way? Well, it's sort of the recipe, I guess. They chambered the body and put the F-hole there. The next unique detail about the guitar is the way it feels, mainly the neck. It's a pretty round and uh, nice C-shaped neck. It's a little on the thick side, but it's not huge. It's nothing like a 58 neck profile or whatever. Uh, it just feels nice and comfy. If you're into little fuller necks, this is exactly what, um, what feels right. <laughs> Okay, next one is cool. This is a very unique finish, which is called an oil wax finish. This is something you would find on really expensive bass guitars, like uh, Fodera basses and some other brands uh, will do this, but on guitars you don't see this very, very often, and uh, it feels so different. It's sort of matte, and uh, you actually feel the wood, because it's not sealed, it's just, protected by the oil and the, the wax on it and uh, it's open pore too so uh, you can actually feel the ash under your fingers there's nothing covering it up it's a very nice way of finishing a guitar and it also lets the guitar ring out more which is especially cool if you play with less distortion or even without an amp and just want to hear the guitar's acoustic sound And the last thing that I think makes this guitar recognizable and original is the visuals. Even though it's sort of a mixture of two other well-known designs, I would recognize this guitar right away. For some reason, the shape is different. It's not your normal single cut shape. And the headstock is different enough to see that it's not the F headstock, <laughs> but similar enough to make you feel like, okay, I know what they meant with that. I know what they wanted to say with this.
I didn't even mention the build quality of this thing. And to be honest, that's because if we're talking about a boutique brand, a really small company, a handful of people basically building very high quality guitars, um, it's sort of normal to have an absolutely flawless instrument at the end. It's ridiculous if you check out details, uh, whether it's the F holes side or uh, like the neck joint or whatever, the, the binding that joins the wood or whatever you look at, it just all looks super precise. If someone asked me to be super picky and search for something that I can't even criticize on this thing is the armrest. Obviously it's a flat top body so this is gonna be 90 degrees right here and um, even though I'm used to my tally which is pretty similar to this the edge with the binding is just less rounded off on this guitar. This is definitely not a design flaw or a production problem or anything. This is a decision the guys at PJD made and I absolutely get it because it gives such a nice and straight contour to the top of the body. It just looks very high-end already because of that. And as told, if you're not a sensitive player and you don't rub your arm against the guitar a lot, you don't even realize this. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, if you have any questions, same thing. You guys take it easy. I'll be back. Bye-bye.